Bandwidth for this episode is brought to you by LA Police Gear, LAPoliceGear.com. Welcome to episode 112 of Gun Guy Radio. This is the podcast that shines a positive light on the firearms lifestyle. I'm your host, Jake Challand, and this is your weekly dose of positive firearms talk without the politics. And this week we have a roundtable edition of Gun Guy Radio with special guests Aaron Krieger from the We Like Shooting podcast and the We Like Shooting Reviews uh, Gun and Gear site. Uh, hey, Aaron, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. And uh, we also have a special guest, Troy Clopton of uh, God and Guns podcast. Hey, Troy. Hey, how's it going tonight? Well few announcements before we get going. We're looking for some interns here at the Firearms Radio Network. Uh, interns is a, another word for volunteers. And we're looking for a web tech wizard to help out Brad with the uh, websites and also an SEO magician. If you can uh, have any of those skills, email me, jake at firearmsradio.tv. And we're also looking out for some help over at the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review site. We're looking for a um, person to help with the review process, submitting reviews and whatnot. So if you're interested in that, you can send an email to mike at firearmsinsider.tv. And uh, we're also giving away a Bond Arms backup in 45 ACP, giving this away uh, May the 4th. So all reviews have to be submitted by April 30th. Um, and Speaking of the Firearms Insider, uh, that's how you enter. You submit a Firearms Insider Gunner Gear review uh, by going to firearmsinsider.tv slash submit. And uh, Brownells helps make this episode of Gun Guy Radio possible. Selection, service, and satisfaction. Find it all at Brownells. Gunguyradio.com slash satisfaction. So we're into the main topic now. And we're talking backyard prepping, um, prepping and food storage for the uh, common man, I guess you might say, the person that just has a backyard, not necessarily living on a farm, but someone that wants to take some proactive um, steps in um, preparing for uh, maybe some worst-case scenarios or just uh, maybe living a little more off the land type of deal, paying a little less for groceries. Could be a lot of reasons. Uh, Troy, you just recently did a show on uh, God and Guns about uh, kind of about this topic. Yeah, we did a brief overview of prepping, not in depth as this one is, is a little bit more t uh, slanted towards. But uh, yeah, I've, I got into prepping about um, 2009, uh, but growing up on a farm, uh, where I knew how to pretty much garden that we were stuck in until we were big enough to drive a tractor or, <laughs> or anything fun. But, uh, no, that, that was, a, it was a fairly good show, uh, I think. Uh, we had some good reviews from it and some good feedback. So what's your knowledge of gardening? Do you guys currently uh, do a garden every year? Do you do any canning? We do. Um, we've started back into it. Uh, growing up was was always a garden, um, always one for us to work in. A lot of sweet corn, a lot of tomatoes, a lot of the you know the staples of country food in my area. And um, in the last uh, three years or so, my wife and I have started uh, working on a garden again. Uh, we've not been doing it a whole lot since we were married, but we've got all the tools and and have everything set up to do it. Just pretty much, it was just some tomatoes and you know basic staples the last few years. Not as much as uh, Aaron has been doing, uh, but <laughs> but Aaron's probably can share a whole lot more than I can. Well, you know, it's uh, my my experience with gardening is is what I like to refer to as urban gardening. I live in a, a just on the outskirts of Detroit. So you know, we, we have to really utilize the land that we have. Um, my wife, and also my wife being a vegetarian, you know, it, it it really you really start planting a lot of different kinds of foods and, and vegetables. I, I you know, and I tried to trick her one year. I put a cow in the ground, thinking maybe I could grow a cow out of, out of a tree or something. And it didn't work. So um, 
Yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, it's, it's beef in the ground. We can eat it. She, she didn't buy it. And I also told her when we first started dating that because chickens basically eat rocks. If you, you know, if you're familiar with chickens, they, they basically just eat anything that you throw on the ground. Pebbles, rocks, uh, small children. So, uh-huh. I mean, you know, so, you, yeah. So, I mean, they're basically just a plant. I, but, again, she didn't buy it. But, you know, our ultimate goal, um, being in the city, is to move out of the city, get it, get it, like about 10 acres, and be able to have a nice garden, a nice little farm, have uh, chickens. And this, another nice thing about this, the cities uh, have changed ordinance here is you can actually have uh, of chickens, just no roosters. So you can have uh, three to seven chickens, depending on your local ordinance. And, and they just make mad amount of eggs. So if you like eggs, you know, and chickens are low maintenance. Again, you can just throw anything on the ground and they'll eat it. Mm-hmm. Which is really nice, uh, but yeah, I got. I, when we get into it, I have some uh, tips and tricks for you know starting a garden. Real simple stuff uh, in in, the, in an urban setting, you know. So when we get there, but yeah, my 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 experience with gardening is a lot of different vegetables, uh, a lot of in, in a small amount of space because that's the key, you know. For for people in the country like like Troy, he he has the ability to obviously not throw a tractor down, but he, you've got some space out there to grow corn, which is not the easiest thing, because corn, you know, you need a little bit more space for corn. Yeah. Um, you know, I've tried that. It, it, <laughs> I tried growing corn once. It grew, like, uh, three feet really fast, and then just stopped. So I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but, you know, for, for people who have 10 feet by 10 feet, you have you don't even know how much space you have. You could grow so many things in that small space. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get into some uh, different methods. I, I guess I'll touch on my background real quick. Um, you know, grew up on a five-acre farm at in the country, and uh, we always had a garden with um, tomatoes, cucumbers, um, winter squash. You know, uh, sometimes uh, just a variety of things. I can't even think right now what all we grew but we never did any canning or anything like that until uh, until I got married and then my wife and I started to uh, experiment with canning uh, growing up she her family canned and stuff so but we'll talk a little bit about you know how to raise things and like you said are in a small space and you know in pretty much any backyard and uh, and then talk about how we store that food once uh, harvest time comes so, you know, backyard gardening, let's do a little section here, backyard gardening for newbies or dummies. You know, how a lot of people are intimidated when they think about growing something, growing a live plant. You know, maybe people have tried it before and they killed it. Right. <laughs> Start off with a fish. That's what I always say. Buy yourself a fish. If you can keep a fish alive, you can keep a plant alive. It's the same concept, just more water or less water. Yeah. You know. But you know, with with here, and let me let me lay down what I do when I start a garden. Um, there's three things you can do. Three things you need to do. You need to section off your garden. Um, you need to kill anything that's in that space where the garden is, because when you start growing your your plants and you used to have grass there, um, if the grass starts growing back in, you don't know how to weed. You don't know is that is that a bean plant or is that just a, a, a you know some grass growing in. So there's some great tricks. Um, depends on how you really want to handle it. You can get some Roundup, and you can spray your whole area with Roundup. And but don't do it and then plant your stuff. Obviously, you're gonna want to wait a little bit. Uh, and supposedly the Roundup eventually dissipates, and you're all set. You can lay down some. Uh, that's not the way we did it. We, I mean, that was a suggestion to us. Another way you can get some. It's like a, a black heavy co- cloth. That you can roll out, and it kills everything underneath it. And you and you cut holes for the plants you want to grow in those spaces, so you ha- it it is not being choked out. We've tried that in the past; it worked out fine. But the best thing that we've ever done, um, and this is what I would always suggest to people, is go out and get some cardboard boxes and lay them on the ground and pile dirt on top of that. So what you're doing there is the cardboard is choking and killing everything underneath it. The dirt that you just put on top is fresh dirt, so you don't have to worry about plants or anything growing out of it that you haven't put into it. And the really nice thing is 
the cardboard eventually just disintegrates. It goes away. So you, you know, you, you're going and and plants that are growing can actually go through the cardboard if it's still present. So you're going to get the nutrients that's in the the old soil. You got your new soil, and it's all going to just become one big mush pile because the cardboard is eventually going to go away anyhow. That's and that's the perfect way that we start a garden. So are you doing a raised bed here, or just uh, a flat bed on the ground, or what? basically on the ground? I mean, if it if um. You know, it, we, it starts off raised maybe an inch or two, but eventually, over you know, over the course of the year and weathering, it just flattens back out to the same level as everything else. I mean, you try to put a border on um, because it was a city. I had an old fence, so I pulled the boards off the fence and just and framed it up using that. So I knew where the boundaries of the garden were. You're in Detroit, so you got tons of old lumber there. You just pulled <laughs> off your neighbor's house. Yeah, yeah. They they didn't appreciate it, but I'm like, go away! I got a gun, and they were fine with that. So. <laughs> So, and, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. And then you know, one of the big things, and this is this is this is just a very old concept: square foot gardening. You get you you make a square. It's an, actually a foot, and that's your space. That's you're gonna you're gonna grow one thing in that space, and then you make another square, and you're gonna grow something else in that space, and you plant usually two to four items depending on size within that foot. I mean, if you're doing carrots, you're going to plant like 12 carrots in a row, or you know, it's in multiple rows. So you're going to have lots of carrots. Of course, you know, the issue with carrots is you got to weed them out so you don't actually grow all those carrots, which is always sad because they need space to grow. So you don't want them to choke each other. You know, it's not that kind of party. Yeah. There's right. a good um, about square foot gardening. I put a link in the show notes. It's one that I got several years ago, and we used it. Uh, when we had a smaller area, um, or we were living about four or five years ago, it's called All New Square Foot Gardening. Um, I bought the previous book um, for a penny on Amazon. You paid too much. No, I'm just kidding. Big investment. <laughs> <laughs> Plus shipping, right? Yeah, I had that. I've got that Amazon thingamajigger where you get. Oh, Prime. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, so it worked out. But it. Um, it's a great resource if uh, if you're just starting out because it you know it tells you the soil depth you need, how deep to plant the seeds, and how to set up your small area garden and what plants you can put with each other. Because if you got a small area to work with, you got to make sure you've got the right plants in the right proximity to each other, so <laughs> you don't have them right. shadowing each other or whatever. Right, and not only that, but like if you put the squash next to the zucchini and the cucumber, they're going to cross germinate. You come out with some really spiky or funky cucumbers and some really sweet tasting zucchini. But you know, because but they're because they're all from that same kind of family. You got to watch out for that kind of stuff. Um, and that's another thing too. Like if you plant zucchini or any of the vining plants, when I say vining, what I mean is when zucchini grows, I'm just going to use that as an example. It's a vine that, that grows off the ground. It can stretch out eight, ten, twelve feet out. So if you put it in the center of your garden, it's going to go right over all the other things that you've already planted. Great place to put it is on the on the outside edge, and then you can actually kind of direct which way it all happens. Right. You can uh, even utilize some of your yard if you want to, if you don't mind. Yes. Some of your grass dying. Um, <laughs> right. You know, what, what, speaking of zucchini, we did a bush zucchini plant, so they. They basically stay in like a um, H or W. Three, w. <laughs> uh, they basically stay in like a three foot square area. When, I mean, once they get full size, so they they're uh -huh. fairly compact for zucchini. Uh, and, and there's also you know for cucumbers, you know there's bush variety cucumbers or, or vine or you know ones you can train to climb. That's the other thing right. you, you can go up mm -hmm. as well. or down. Or you could go. I mean, you could get like um. No, no, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you can get like um, uh, like my wife. She has a thing that goes on the back of a door that shoes fit into. You can actually grow plants, tomatoes, um, or zucchini, and the and the vines will come down. So you're saving space. You're working in a vertical space versus a horizontal space, which you know. So boom, you're saving tons of space that way. Yeah, I I usually don't grow uh, zucchinis in my bedroom, but you know. <laughs> well, I mean, oh well, yeah, you you you'd want to hang it outside because it does need a little bit more sun, especially in our garden. Take the door and hang it outside. Sit down. So. <laughs> yeah, the love cavern. We we don't want to grow things in there. So except children, I guess. 
So in my in my backyard, we we um I picked up I think they're two by twelves, eight feet eight feet long, and you know I mean you picked them up. Wow, you're pretty strong. Yeah, I two at a time even. Oh wow! Yeah, look at that. <laughs> look out, ladies. So, so I threw that down, and then um I did I did a three part mixture of um, peat moss, vermiculite, which is a mineral, and then compost. And now, did I'm, you buy the compost? Or did you actually go and buy compost? I'm just. Yeah, I didn't. Okay. I didn't. Yeah. No, no, I. Right. I'll, right, no, I did because I what we were not we we still don't have a compost pile and we probably should. That's another thing we could talk about. You can get those like 50 gallon drum compost turner machines for your backyard yeah. and make your own compost. You just throw into a pile in your backyard. I mean, right. if you really want to go, if you're really into prepping. You what you need to do is lay down a, a hose and a, a water hose. Throw a compost pile on there. Inside that compost, it gets to be it can get up to 120 degrees in there. You run water through there, you have hot water all of a sudden. You know, so there's another there's another possibility. If you I need to take a shower and you know there's no hot water available, there you go. That's that's one of the possibilities. But you smell like compost, right? <laughs> Hopefully the hose is insulated, but I do smell like compost, oddly enough. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, you can just have a compost pile. You know, I mean, you, the 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 convenience of the barrel is you can turn a lever and it spins it. But you know, if you if you can lift a eight by ten, you should be able to, uh, uh, to grab a pitchfork and and turn your compost. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's a, that's a really that's a really good point though about spatial issues. So. So I, you know, I built this eight by eight, basically square, and then I, I, like you said, I squared it off into foot sections, and then, um, but you're right, you, you really have to put the right things next to each other because we've made the mistake of not doing that, mm -hmm. and then uh, some things will choke other things out. So you know, re researching what you, what you, what you plant, um, you know, maybe for newbies, start with simple things like you know, tomatoes, cucumbers. Uh, what what other would plants would be good starters? I I'm a big fan of pep. Hey, you know what? If you're a newbie, the best thing you can do is go to Home Depot and buy a plant that's already half or just you know it's, they start plants there. You just go and buy them and you plant them in the ground. And what comes out is your care, but they started the hard part. They plant the seed. They they put the effort in. Started in a greenhouse, so you right. get your spring garden in. Right, and l let me interrupt real quick. So this episode's releasing in March, so like for us up north, we have time to still start some stuff by seed, but you may be in other regions where you may not have time for that depending on your growing season, so you know, buying already started plants, or just for convenience, it might be you know, a good option for you. Yeah, and, and in my area, and maybe in your area too, listeners, not obviously not Jake, um... The cities have really good recycling programs where you put out the big uh, brown paper bags and they come by in the trucks and they take them. If you find out where they take them, uh, it's called SOCCO here. I don't know what it stands for. It's just a lot of letters to me. But they're all basically the same letters, so it was pretty easy to remember. Um, they they do all. They just you know they turn them. They it's all leaves and all yard waste in there. So it's really nice that you just go there and they give it to they get, you. Get the end product for free. So you know you can fill up a back of a pickup truck, and you can use that in your garden. So you can get free, basically it's composted dirt without the without the vegetable matter in it. Yeah, or or at a deep discount. Luckily here we can go to the local dump, and you know that's where the waste management. Is it? Runs yeah, out. your house is a dump. And what? It is. Sorry, but <laughs> but it's it's not free, but it's a deep deeply discounted compost. So. Yeah, and I mean that's a great way to go. Uh, it, I remember filling up the back of my wife's CRV, you know, laid down a tarp and just dumped it in there when three loads in, you know, and it was, it's great stuff, you know, or, and, and or get our, something our, going with your neighbors, you know, get get some yeah. neighbors planting gardens, and then, uh, you know, if you're planting at the same time, you can just have a truck back into one of your driveways, bring all you need, you know, and then wheelbarrow it, you know, wherever you need it. Totally, yeah, the people dump dirt all the time. You can look on Craigslist; people have dirt on there all the time. You know, uh, it's a great way to go. And there's companies out there that sell organic seeds. Uh, you know what? Heritage. Let's talk heritage tomatoes. Those things are the nastiest looking things in the world. I'm <laughs> sorry. I, I've grown accustomed to, like, normal 
brown, red, beautiful tomatoes. Heritage foods, you know, I, I stay away from those. <laughs> there's a reason why that. There's a reason why they make them look nice, you know. Well, the advantage of the heirloom type. You talking about the heirloom type? Seed? Yeah, heirloom. I'm sorry. Yes. True. Uh, yeah. The only advantage of those are is you can grow them year after year if you save the seeds, whereas your beautiful tomatoes only right. last season. Right. So, so if you're really <laughs> paranoid in the whole prepping thing, and you think yeah. that we might have a EMP and you know the, basically the world ends and, and then you have to regrow your seeds year after year then you're going to want the heirloom seed. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, but they just make the ugliest looking food ever. I'm sorry. I mean they're giant and they don't. You know what? Too, it's really interesting. Um, I find the heirloom tomatoes are grainier and not as sweet as uh, the more the the tomatoes we have out now. The hybrids, right? Because yeah. you know they've developed those to taste better, to uh, have a better texture, I guess, or makeup. Yeah, totally. They did a good job. Good and job, they, engineers. They can lay in the grocery store for a month, and they still are red. And... Yeah, I appreciate that too. <laughs> They're delicious. Um, but you know, if you let's, let's move, uh, let me jump around here a bit because I want to talk about some other things too. I want to talk about reusable foods. Um, and when I say reusable foods, I don't mean like you can eat it, regurgitate it, and, and cook with it again. I mean like, like garlic. You got gar if you have garlic in your in your fridge, like a clove, a big clump of garlic, you pop off one of the those little cloves in there. You can throw that in the dirt. Boom, you're growing garlic. You're growing a whole new garlic plant, which will grow a brand new bulb just from that little thing. So if you like garlic and you want to grow that, super. So there's something that's super easy to grow. Uh, same with scallions or green onions, however, wherever you're from, whatever you call them. You can cut them down to the, the bulb part and throw them in water, like right in the window. Throw them in a glass of water, and it grows a completely new new uh, green onion scallion right there, which is pretty smooth. And another thing, this is something that we grew, and it just went out of control, and we love it, is uh, chives. Chives are great. They come back year after year after year. They're super thick. They're super green, and they get and bigger every year and it's just that you just walk out there with a pair of scissors cut a big handful off wash it off and cook with it and it's delicious so I mean a lot there's a lot of foods and potatoes potatoes you know you got a potato and it's in your fridge it's growing eyes or whatever potatoes grow those little lumps on there those gross little moles um, you know don't, don't throw that potato away throw it in a big bucket of dirt Deeper the better, and then it grows out. It grows more potatoes. You know what you do? You put more dirt on top of that, and more potatoes happen. That's the great thing about potatoes: potatoes, onions, garlic. Boom! You got a soup there. I'm eating it right now. <laughs> we have a lot of um, berries around here. So the property that we had bought a few years back is covered up in blackberries, and uh, mm. no maintenance to those. I mean, you just you have to mow them down every once in a while to get a fresh, you know, get a fresh growth off them. But as far as maintenance, there's not a whole lot to it, and you get a lot of fruit for just the nuisance of them. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's funny. Um, we bought some blackberries from the store the other day. We got like a couple gourmet little stores around here, and I, I I'm not even lying. The uh, the blackberries were about the, as big as the tip of my thumb, right? And my kids are like, "Oh, these are nice," and I'm like, "You don't understand." You go out in the woods and you start picking these things. They're about the size of your pinky, you know, just the, the, the fingernail on your pinky. And you're getting cut up by the, the thorns on the plants. You know, you're really working hard, but, you know, you get these giant ones from the store. You just got to, you just, they don't appreciate it. Yeah. I should just throw them into a big briar patch and say, get out. <laughs> get out. But with berries, you have to be really, you have to be really careful because, um, you know, berries are suscept susceptible to diseases. Um, blueberries, I'm working on a, a patch of blueberries this year, and the issue with that is getting the acidic level of, because blueberries are really acidic, and you have to have your, your pH balanced on your, um, on your where it's growing has to be close to like a 6, which is uh, over, 6 to an 8, which is a really high number. You, you know, your standard is a 1, uh, or even a 0. 0.5 or a 1 in your yard. So to get it to a six, you can only move it like I, I want to say maybe two pH points per year. That's just no matter what you put in your ground, um, you know it's usually like a, a nickel-based substance 
and it, that's what helps push it. But you know, like so, certain berries are, are really hard to grow. And he, and another thing too is you just can't just plant it um, like your your uh, you just can't plant your berries and be like, okay, the plants are there. You got to make sure you have a male and a female. You know, that's another thing too. Some plants require you having both sexes next to each other to to uh, to populate its uh, production of produce. And berry berries. Oh yeah. <laughs> so let let's go back a little bit. So, you know, figure out a place to plant. Maybe figure out, uh, you know, buy some books uh, or, you know, Troy's put some, a couple of websites in here uh, as well for knowledge bases and uh, resources. Um, and there's also, well, you, uh, Troy, you put in here uh, clubs, garden clubs, uh, for, even, you know, 4-H. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you can be a volunteer for your children's 4-H and you can learn everything they're learning as well. <laughs> so it doesn't yeah, cost goes, you. Yeah, and goats are great because I think of 4-H. I think of the goats in 4-H. You, know, you can get milk from them. You can uh, they eat your grass, so you don't have to ever mow. You know, that's perfect stuff. Go get a goat if you can get a goat. They have little pygmy goats too. They're sort of like cute. They're like little dogs or tail wags when they see you, and then you cut your head, their heads off and you eat them. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay, and then then we need to figure out how much time you know what what your growing season is. How much time grow you have now? If you're in Texas, you probably have all year. <laughs> but right. If, if you're, you know, in northern Illinois, like myself, or in Michigan, um, you're gonna have a lot less time. And um, Troy, you're and in it, Kentucky. That's gonna be a little bit more than we have, but still, you have not this year. But man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this, this year well, we pr probably have a little less. Yeah, it's uh, we still had uh, st we had snow. What was it two days ago? We had some snow blowing around here two days ago. I think it snowed here today. To be honest with you, degrees. I'm like, geez. <laughs> so if you're if you're thinking about you know what what seeds to plant, you're gonna want to you know go to the seed catalogs or go to the websites and figure out you know what zone you're in. Or, you know the U.S. is split into uh, zones and then. That may dictate what what you can plant. There are some things that you can't plant because your growing season may not be long enough, depending. Right. On well, and, and there's 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 foods that are optional uh, in regards to temperatures. But before I go there, I just also want to point out if you're going to be growing something like tomatoes, you're going to want something with a lot of sun. You're going to want because tomatoes are a sun plant. They need to be full sun, and that, that really does make a difference. You know, you, you don't want to get something that's not full sun in the sun because you can end up burning that plant. Right. Um, but I want to talk about like something you could grow in the winter time. You can grow kale in the winter time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not and, and and kale. I'll be honest, kale is it's really a thick, tough. It's like it's like chewing on bark. But there's some tricks with kale. You take a rolling pin and you roll roll out kale if you got that, or you massage it. It breaks it down really easily, and it is it, you can make it, it's almost as good as lettuce. But it, you know, kale on its own is you can slap someone with it and they'll, they'll cry. I might even cry. You hit me with a piece of kale. <laughs> Kale's brutal. But yeah, you, there's a there's a lot of foods out there that will grow in the winter time, even if it's just in your windowsill. You know, you just you don't need a lot of space to grow a certain foods. Um, you know what always cracks me up is uh, avocados. Everyone's like, oh, I want to grow an avocado tree because they get that big pit. And it takes like – an avocado tree is like a pine tree. It, they grow like 40 feet tall if, if, no one, if no one's ever seen an avocado tree. So, yeah, don't yeah, – that's a great idea, but really don't, don't get your hopes up on that one. Something so, that – Something you can do to extend your season is they've got these little uh, greenhouses now that are like made out of PVC pipe and uh, like a tarp. You can extend, you know, you can start uh, your seeds out or start out your seedlings in those uh, even during your cold temperatures. You can keep a heat source in there or a pile of compost in there as you were saying before and, you know, add another month or so on each end of your growing season. And it's not a whole lot of investment, and it's not, you know, you can take it down during the summertime. They're pretty portable. 
Yeah, I think my neighbors are really big in the growing because I see them pulling in all this growing equipment into their house all the time. So I can only assume that they're really big into, uh, you know, herbiculture of some sort. <laughs> herbiculture, herbiculture. Yeah, I don't know what. Bringing in on the Good for them. Market, man. <laughs> <laughs> they, there's a lot, of, a lot of reggae music coming out of there. I don't know. Um, so so the other so types of plants, you, and Troy, I see you put in here also to consider, like, if they contain omega-3 or omega-6 fatty acids and stuff like that. Well, if you're talking about uh, sustaining yourself off of a garden, which we really didn't get too specific in the early parts when I was putting these notes together, you need to have some kind of fats in your diet, and especially if you have children, they need fats for brain development and for just to you know keep weight on them. Um, there's some plants I've, I've listed hidden here that that have you know some essential, uh, essential fats, then omega-3 fatty acids, omega-6 fatty acids. And like sunflowers, those are easy to grow. We can plant those things about anywhere, and the kids love them. And um, and there's you know there's a lot of fat in there that can be helpful for that. So if you're thinking about a, a, um, trying to grow a garden that will sustain you, you want a real wide variety. You want something that's got uh, more than just your carbohydrates in there. You need to get as much fat out of there as possible. And Aaron can probably uh, Tell, tell us more about that since his wife's a vegetarian. I'm sure she's always focused on that. Oh, yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is proteins. You know, you mm -hmm. need proteins. You, and she, you just can't live on peanut butter, you know. Yeah. It's a huge diet of beans and legumes of all sorts. Um, you know, I'll, we'll make a, a, a fajita. And for me, it's it's some meat, some cheese, um, and some vegetables. For her, it's vegetables and beans and cheese. And, it, and within the, 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 the vegetables, you know, she, we, we cut up some uh, zucchini and, and, and cook that up. And, you know, uh, pepper, red peppers and onions, all things that you can cook in your backyard. I mean, uh, grow in your backyard. I'm sure you could cook them back there, too, if you have a grill. But I wouldn't do it in the wintertime like right now. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's you've got to have a variety. It's a, it's a really good point. And then I want to also throw out that the, the baby goats again. Mm -hmm. Because goats, you know, they're, they're low maintenance. They honestly are. They're like a dog. And you can get milk, so you can get protein from there. You can get dairy, you can get vitamin D, and again, you can just eat those cute little bastards. They they are delicious. So, so can you have goats in town and where you live? I've I've seen. I was cruising around downtown Detroit, and uh, they have a casino down. They actually have a bunch of casinos down there. But I was driving by one of the casinos. Just I like looking at the architecture in Detroit. Those houses are beautiful. And they're scary, and they're decrepit, and there's all points in between. And I stop at this stop sign, which is a rarity because no one ever stops at a stop sign or a stoplight in Detroit. And I look over my shoulder, and I see a house, and it has like 50 goats and, and geese downtown Detroit. You know, mm -hmm. so yes, you can have goats. That to, the long the, the long answer to your your question, yes, you can have goats. Well, yes. if you declare them a pet, you could probably you know say, well, these are pets. Although it might be one of those spit out in the back, but <laughs> <laughs> that's right. They just go in a circle a lot. So we should preference, you know, any kind of animals like goats, chickens. You know, check with your local ordinances before ordering some. <laughs> yeah, and seriously, and that's really weird too. My um, my cousin, he he was really big in the growing turkeys and 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 chickens and ge geese and goats, and you can order those things by mail. Like chickens, you could just get a box of uh, baby chicks in there. That's it's, it's crazy to think of that. Chicken nuggets. Yeah, basically. I mean, they're like popcorn when they come out. You just pop them in your mouth. You know, oh, this stuff's great. You know, it's cheaper than buying a full chicken. You know, so boom. <laughs> and also another thing too, which is which is hard to do these days because of a, a certain bacteria that's hitting a, a beekeeping. You know, honey is great. Um, the, the byproducts of what bees can produce is, is and beekeeping is pretty low maintenance too. You just got to go in and, and scrape them every so often. You know that that's there's a lot of cities that have ordinances against it, mm -hmm. but I mean downtown New York City, you can you can't have a gun, but you can have uh, you can have bees. So Attack. you know, killer bees, <laughs> killer <That's> bees. <laughs> so, well, you can only have seven bees. Any more than that, then you're uh, you're in danger of the Safe Act. Um, but yeah, I mean. 
if you're looking if you're looking for something that the SHTF's kind of stuff, I would suggest goats, bees, and a good garden, mm-hmm. and and chickens because they're all you know they're low maintenance and, and they're not gonna they're, you're not gonna be like man we don't have any food for them. You know what you do the bees eat the the whatever bees eat which are like other plants and small things that bees eat. I watched the bee movie. They didn't really show what they ate in there. Um, goats eat grass. There's always going to be grass somewhere, or they'll eat a bush, or they'll eat a can. I, I, don't bees eat pollen? I, don't they? Use I guess pollen? they kind of carry it and they regurgitate it up, and it's like makes like sugar, and then they eat the honey. So you got to share the honey with them. Yeah. So um, well, the chickens so, eat the dead bees too, because bees only live a short period of time. Their wings snap off, and then the chickens eat those. My brother uh, has bees. And yeah, I mean it's, years, it's not so. that hard. Get a couple of boxes, throw some bees in there. I need a queen bee or a pheromone that smells like a queen bee, and they and they're like, "Hey, what's up, baby?" And they just they populate themselves. It's great. You get some killer bees in there, mix it in. Those bees are mean, but they, they grew. They they're great to have. You know, I don't have a dog. I got killer bees. Uh, but you know, all these animals, chickens, bees, goats, self-sufficient. Gardening, you know. It, that's pretty. Is is you can grow a staple with a, with a small amount of space, as we we pointed out earlier. Mm-hmm. But uh, like you were saying, you know, you got to have variety, and that's why I'm suggesting the other the other items as well. You know, you have to have the omega six fatty acids. You have to have you have to have the carbohydrates. You have to have the proteins. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a show where we need Carol. You know, <laughs> she'd be like, you need the uh, K- what is it? Kano uh, caveman diet. Paleo? Paleo diet, yeah. Paleo. Yeah. Fire good. <laughs> so another thing is to figure out how much to plant. Um, I'm famous for overplanting, um, but so this can be more of a trial and error thing, especially if you're new at it. Yeah, one zucchini plant. That's all you need. Honest to God, you plant three. You're like, oh, three plants. You're gonna have so much zucchini. And it's gonna just you're gonna be right, right done. because you buy you buy a packet of seed and you got all these seeds you're like well I got to plant them I have them right <laughs> right exactly and well, another thing too you don't want your zucchini you know some guy will walk up and look at look at my eight foot zucchini you know it weighs two hundred pounds yeah but you bite into it it tastes like a tree you know you want to get those things when they're small so and just a heads up on people first first time growers of those things size matters you don't want the, you don't want it too big. Yeah, zucchini, you, like, leave that plant alone for, like, four days, depending on the time of year, and you'll have, like, a, like, you know, like you said, a three-foot-long zucchini. <laughs> right. Crazy. Oh, you know, I wanted to point out, too, I, I totally forgot about it. Um, we, we go to a farmer's market near here, and they, and no one walks around with ARs, by the way. I know it's not a political show, but, you know, there's, there's, there's always those guys at the, uh, like, walking around, like, well, it's, it's open carry. Anyhow, anyhow, you go to the farmer's market here. And it's really nice. There's a person who sells in these little paper bags, and it looks like um, a little golf ball. And what's inside it is um, praying mantis eggs. And you put that out in your garden. Birds don't find it because birds love those things. And when it hatches, you have probably about a thousand praying mantis running around your your garden. And those things will eat any invasive bug that you can imagine. Those things, plus they're just cool to look at too, you know. So I would always suggest if you you can find them, you can even buy them online, prey mantis or even uh, ladybugs. Not the Chinese ladybugs though; those things are mean. I tell the difference between American ladybugs are are red, and the Asian style are um, either orange or yellow. They actually bite yeah, like they, people. They, they yeah, they bite and they're. They're a huge nuisance, especially around here. There's yeah, just like swarms of them. Yeah, they come in in the fall, and then you start about this time of the year. They start coming out of the cracks, heading back outside. Yeah, and they're like, oh, ladybug, how cute! Ow, what the? F-? You know, it's like that's basically what what an Asian ladybug is, right there. <laughs> yeah, just throwing so, that out there. Okay, so uh, how much to plant, and then what what else? So well, if you location, I, can I go back just one second on the size of the garden? Because you guys were sort of focused on the small in-town type gardeners or people that don't have a lot of space. I mean, 
you can get uh, a group of people like-minded together, uh, you know, other people, your friends that want to grow a garden. Maybe somebody's got a larger plot of land than you do, and you can work together and have a larger garden, share the tools, share the labor. Um, so when you have good friends, they'll actually pitch in and help. But um, and, and it's just, um, it sort of holds each other accountable too. So I know in the past that we've shared a garden with the family. It's been a lot easier because everyone sort of chips in together and works on it, and you can share the tools and things together. Yeah, that, that's a great idea, and um, you can you maybe have a relative with a big bigger plot of land where you can uh, you know put sweet corn or things that take up more space. Um, that that's what we do um, here where my studio is is actually on the back side of my grandpa's farm so we have plenty of land here where I can cultivate and uh, we've had you know sweet corn we'll put the vines out here because like you know Aaron was saying the vines can be very evasive they right. go everywhere yeah grape grape vines are terrible I mean they will I they will just keep coming and coming and coming and and they rarely produce grapes you know so I mean you you if you if you want to make some like a nice rice and grape or app stuff, you you know, with the leaves, they're great for that. But you know, it, vine, I'm sorry to interrupt, but vine, yeah, they're completely invasive. So beware. Uh, and uh, I've I've put potatoes out here. Um, you know, like back to vines, pumpkins. Pumpkins are fun. Um, you know, to shoot for to shoot yeah for the fall time uh for making pumpkin pie or making jack o lanterns or you know Who makes pumpkin pie i hate pumpkin, pumpkin pie what? you're off the show it's, go away. <laughs> it's pie. terrible i mean who wants to, it's like making let's let's make some sort of vegetable pie let's make zucchini pie let's make squash pie no it sounds terrible and they're all from the same family pumpkin pie just cuz you dump like 50 pounds of brown sugar in there you suddenly have a pie <laughs> Why don't, you, why don't you see the don't, pie don't full of sugar? Don't get the whipped cream. The, the whipped cream. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. It's so, like sweet you know, potatoes. The other thing these. you can touch on is if you, you know, you're a homeowner and you're landscaping, you know, think about planting fruit trees. Think about, you know, um, grapes, you know, grapevines, you know, things that are perennials. Things that, apple you know, trees are great, you know, they yeah, flower in the spring. Trees. Um, uh, and cherry trees, uh, pear trees, yeah. uh, peaches, and those grow in most weather, you know, conditions. So that's really nice too. Right. We're gonna have a harder time with with citrus, so you can get dwarf sized fruit trees as well if you don't have a lot of area. And you can well, still... they they prefer to be called, uh, you know, small <laughs> trees, people Munchkin of smallness. Trees. <laughs> Much <Munchkin laughs> trees, not midget trees. Yeah, let's just be completely offensive. <laughs> the trees are now crying. I was talking Jake, about gonna, plants. <laughs> Jake, you're going to get a ton of emails from a bunch of trees. Just be like, why you got to be picking on us? Not PC, man. So, just throwing it out there. So I guess let's talk about uh, foods that are um, maybe more uh, better suited for storage, for long-term storage, like you know, for like canning tomatoes. or... or, or Potatoes you, you can store in a cold basement. That's yeah, true, like that. yeah. The worst food in the absolute world. The one food I, I like, no matter what age I've ever been, I've always hated. You know, it's not like you, because some, your, your palate changes as you grow older. And this thing is never, I always taste, and I'm going to tell you what it tastes like, and you tell me what it is. When I bite into this thing, it tastes like it's it's dirt. It tastes like actually physical dirt. And it's, a, it's something that's canned. Anyone can can anyone guess what that is? No, by the silence. A beet. <laughs> Canned beets taste like dirt. It tastes like earth. And it's the one thing I hate, but everyone seems to love to can them. And let's dump like fifty gallons of red dye number five in there. What's up with that? <laughs> I don't know. What's up with that? Like I'll eat a fresh beet, that's delicious. Or no, I'm thinking of a radish. Radishes are good. I like radishes. So what, what are some common things that you can can? And I guess canning, let, let's explain what that is. That's taking uh, glass mason jars and um, cooking whatever it is you're going to put in there, put it in there, and then you, you put a pressure seal on that glass uh, canning jar, and basically you know it's sealed up, 
just like a it's kind of sealed up just like a you know something you buy from the store mm -hmm. and then you can can keep that for you know maybe up to a year or maybe even a couple of years depending on what's in there I think yeah, five years is usually my mark. Once they start, if it if it turns black in there, then you probably it's probably done. <laughs> but if it's nothing, if nothing's turned black, you can still eat it. Unless it started off black, then you're just you know it's like a gamble. <laughs> you know it's like oh maybe, right? So, so but, what are some uh, what are some common beans, common man. Things? beans, <laughs> green beans, yeah, green beans, and they're easy to grow oh. too. So that's like a that's a, and you know when when you say cook, you don't have to like cook them until they they, they turn to mush. You could just blanch them. You know, do a do a quick, uh, and by blanching, it's you you throw them in boiling water, or you throw them in water. Once the water begins to boil, you throw them into an ice bath. So it it, it cooks, but then it it stops cooking really quick, because if you cook something and pull it out and it sits in the hot water, while it's still in the hot water, it's still going to continue to cook. So you want to put that ice bath. And it stops the cooking right there, so you're going to seize it right at that perfect point of, of where you want it to be cooked. Then you can put it into a jar, put the top on, throw it in the boiling water, pr put the pressure top on, and seal it up. So you get that perfect uh, perfect vegetable. Because basically we're, we're killing the bacteria before we can it, right? Right, and you want to boil the you also want to boil the jars and, and the lids too separately before you put anything in there to help. Because if you get, I mean, I do this when I can. Um, I make jelly every year or jam. And I, you know, you gotta do that with that. Otherwise, you'll get bacteria that, that forms in there. And then, and if you get bacteria that forms in there, then you give that jar to someone you know, you know, because you don't want to eat it. <laughs> I always gave my brother, you know, I, I made like 24 jars of jelly last year, and I gave my brother probably six of them, you know, because they're like, what, what am I gonna do with all that jelly besides, you know, eat a lot of PBJs? And I go over to his house one day, and just to visit, walked in unannounced, like I always do, like the kind of like a Kramer. And there he is just like eating the jelly out of the jar. I'm like, come on. At least put some bread on there. That's nasty. That's <laughs> funny too because a lot of people don't, don't realize this, but when you go out and you're out in the field and you're picking food and you're picking berries and stuff and you bring them in the house, sure, you may rinse them off, but when you throw them in that pot, there's probably bugs and stuff in there. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. You know, you're like, oh, you know, it all looks like it's an extra protein. I think the World Health Organization. There's an, there's another thing for preppers. The World Health Organization said if you need food, eat bugs. So grab a shovel and start digging. Turn some rocks over. You got a meal. Yeah, we didn't even talk about how we can fry up grasshoppers we find in the backyard. Fry up what slugs, snails. Yeah, I, right? yeah. What would that? I've never had a snail or a slug. I don't know. I mean, I guess I garlic know. butter and garlic's easy to grow. You have a goat. You can make some butter. Boom! Look at that. You're gourmet all of a sudden. It's like five star backyard. It could be your own TV show, Jake. All right. So green beans. What else can we can? You can can about anything if you you know properly prepare. Yeah, I've, seen, I've seen canned apples. I've seen a canned chicken. You ever seen a canned chicken? That's the sound it makes when it falls out of the can. Okay. It's a dilly. It is. Yeah, it is it's the nastiest thing you've ever seen. But people can do it. People have canned chickens. Yeah, but can. I mean, a lot of people can, uh, you know, will jar meat. They'll cube it up and, and put it in a, in a jar and store it up and then make it into a soup or whatever with it later on. So do I have to kill the chicken before I can it, or how does that work? I've seen Perfect. feathers come out with those things, so <laughs> however you want to handle it. When I was on a farm, when I was on, a, I was a little kid, and I used to work on a farm. And it was the nastiest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, you know, you, if you've seen someone wring the head off a chicken, that's the, you know, and, and the chicken runs around and the guy's just standing there holding the head in his hand and laughing. <laughs> you know, it's like a David Lynch movie. It's terrible. Um, hog slaughtering day. It my has, grandmother killed yeah, two it was like, at the same time, one in each hand. Just twist her neck. They snapped off. They run around the yard and she pitches the... The heads over the fence to the dogs who were barking, and it was it was something to see when you're like yeah. sick. <laughs> right, exactly. And then like I remember, um, this is probably why I hate poodles to this day. Um, uh, this farm I worked at, they had hogs, and it was hog slaughter and day. And they, uh, and uh, it's funny because you're in Kentucky, and this all took place in Ipsatucky, Michigan, Ypsilanti, which is full of Kentucky mm -hmm. people. And they uh, they they got they got them, <laughs> and uh, there's just like 
a pile of mess underneath where they've gutted them, and all these little poodles are just lapping it all up, and these white poodles are basically red, and then from like that day on, I'm like, poodles are nasty. Oh, it's just all dogs. We, we, my brother and I grew uh, hogs when we were kids. We both had a sow each, and we'd have about three litters a year, and every, you know, after they get up to be about a month or two, maybe a couple months old, you'd have to... Um, You'd have to uh, take the mountain oysters and get them out of there. <laughs> so we would, you know, we would be cutting. We called it cutting the hogs. You had to grab them by the back legs, flip them over on their back, pin their le back legs down, take a scalpel, and remove the offensive parts. And the dogs would be standing there outside the barn, just waiting to catch. <laughs> <laughs> It was the biggest treat for the dogs. Three times a year, they just they follow us around all the time, waiting for. Waiting I was for the I was watching a um, a Dirty Jobs with you know Micro, and he was at a was a sheep farm I think, and they were doing that. But instead of uh, um, <laughs> removing those with a knife, they removed those. They cut cut a slit and remove them with their teeth. They, Oh my gosh! And pull them out because it was quicker and easier. <laughs> What's that, Troy? I think they saw it coming. <laughs> <laughs> Put new meaning to dirty in the dirty jobs. <laughs> yeah. So no, we, didn't, we didn't bite them off. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> That's we terrible. Wait, terrible. We did wait a year until they got too big. They, we, uh, they were probably 160 pounds or so, 140, 160 pounds. I was talking about the pigs and not the, uh, yeah. the offensive parts. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, that big guy wouldn't have messed with them. <laughs> but, uh, it was like grabbing a hold of a jackhammer and those, uh, get, a hold, get a hold of the pigs and try to flip them over and hold on. Um, it, was, uh, it was all you could do. Yeah, so, that would be all I wouldn't uh, want to do. <laughs> Let's touch on, uh, so yeah, like Troy said, you can pretty much anything. There's really great canning books. Um, we have some resources in the show notes. And the Norwegian people, they can fish. I mean, you can can, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the, the Jews with their kefilter fish. I only say it because I'm Jewish, so I, I, I can take that word. Those Jews, kefilter fish, what is that, right? I've never had it. I've, I've seen people eat it because it doesn't look like a fish. I think it's like six different fishes and they grind together. And then they put in some sort of jelly. Yeah, it's nasty looking. All right, so I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a tactile kind of person when I look at food. If it's nasty, it's not going in this. And I'm a big guy. If you, you see me I, like on the street, you'd be like, that dude, it's going to be in that movie 7 where he <laughs> eats himself to death. Right? So, um, yeah, I'm not, if it looks nasty, I don't even eat like uh, what that, SpaghettiOs because those just look too funky to me. It's like white, red blood cells. I'm not going there. <laughs> So um, let's hit on soil uh, location and quality. Big thing. Michigan is terrible. We're very sandy here, mm -hmm. sandy and full of clay. So you got to be aware of that. You'll, you'll, we, have, we grow a lot of corn here. We grow a lot of potatoes here uh, and soy. That's our main, our main crops here in Michigan. Um, and I don't know how that well that handles. And that's, that's commercial crops. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, you know, in your backyards, you have to import a lot of your own personal soil, whether it's by the bag or having a truck dump it at, at, at your location. Like I said, it's it's very sandy here due to the uh, the glacier movements. Uh, very rocky, very um, very clay like. Hmm. I don't know. Kentucky is probably pretty good. I don't know. Um, Ohio is really good. Yeah, Kentucky's got a little bit of everything. Uh, we've got flat ground out to the western part of the state and then the eastern part is just hills and more hills and uh, right in the middle where I live at is sort of a mix just depends on the county you're in uh, where we're at we have a lot of red clay and um, and a lot of limestone a lot of uh, limestone bedrock so the sh or our our property my wife's and I, and my property we we've got a lot of red clay so we had to bring in topsoil to, uh, to actually have a good garden and then we plant our corn down in a bottom the back of our property because there's a lot better soil down there a lot better water so 
Just we, uh, location. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the new new markets here in Michigan is wine. We see a lot of wine, either cherry or grape. And uh, Traverse City, um, you know, everyone says you know Washington D.C. is the cherry capital of the world, but it actually it's Traverse City, Michigan, and they have they make tons of cherry wine, and and because of the seasons, they make iced cherry wine. Uh, it's when it's colder out, you know, you get it at the last minute, so it's supposed to be sweeter. But um, you know, so the, you see a lot, a lot of a wine market here, and and of course we have the best beer in the U.S. Uh, Bell's beer out of Kalamazoo. Yeah, shout out, give me some free beer. So anyhow, uh, yeah, I mean, but yeah, talking about soil and stuff, it, it's it's going to be so hard based on so many different locations and uh, depending on your listeners, you really got to just, right. if you live in an area with, with terrible soil, you're going to look at Home Depot, Lowe's, or, or Menards, or whatever your, your personal uh, home, you know, outdoor places home improvement store is that you have and, and you're going to have to buy dirt mm -hmm. or or you just start composting composted dirt works great and yeah. another thing too at the end of the year um, you know if you don't own a tiller you uh, you just um, you just I mean it, it, it's, it's kind of helpful even if you just go out and rent one um, you don't have to pull your plants out of the ground you just put them right back in there by tilling the soil. A lot of the nutrients uh, are sucked out of your soil by your plants. Potatoes are infamous for just stealing minerals and, and, and vitamins out of your out of the earth. So if you um, if you just till the, those plants right back in there, it, it adds it back in. Um, table scraps, throw them out there at the in the, in the fall. you know uh, obviously you don't want to put meat out there because meat attracts animals and it is it's not really good as a garden uh, compost, but you know if you want to start if you want to start a garden a couple years out and you're kind of planning this whole thing out, start a compost pile right where you want to grow your garden, and that way you know this it's just going to be so rich and 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 so much nutrients in there. Yeah, and um, another thing to consider is getting a soil tester kit where you can test the pH levels of your soil. That's does Brownell sell that? And uh, maybe. <laughs> I'll have to look. <laughs> and uh, that way you can, you know, kind of figure out what you need to add. You know, maybe you don't need completely new soil. Maybe you just need to add some fertilizer or, you know, some, um, you know, element that you're missing there um, to get things in balance. And, you know, the other thing is you, you could check with local farmers. Maybe they have free, uh, you know, fertilizer that you can uh, get from there, like a local horse horse farm or something. Horses. You can get some uh, horse really people fertilizer love horses. There. there are a lot of chicken barns around here that raise thousands and thousands of chickens, and the farmers get that um, clean out every spring about this time of the year, and they'll spread it on their fields. And then we get this lovely aroma for about two or three weeks. <laughs> Left to wash it <laughs> down in the soil, but it's good fertilizer. It's uh, you just uh, have them swing through your backyard, Troy. All right, we've got a lot of distillers around here too. Uh, we've got a lot yeah. of whiskey uh, makers, and so you can go get the um, the after product of all that process, which is a mucky, stinking mess that. <laughs> <laughs> they also they spread in the fields around and uh, so uh, there's a lot of free things out there if you're near any kind of farming area or even food production areas that you can get for compost material. Yeah, right. that's, that's, that's do really we true. Wanna, do we want to touch on harvesting really quick? Any harvesting tips? Uh, um, yeah, I guess uh, harvest in the fall. <laughs> Well, one thing that that we made a mistake of was we planted everything at the same time, and so we had a lot of things coming ripe at the same time, and so a lot of things were, you know, we didn't have time to process it fast enough that it went to waste. So we've learned to plant, you know, about every week or two out. As you know, if you got the long, if you, if you have a long enough season that you can do that, but sort of do it in cycles so that you'll have some maturing at different points in time, so you're not all trying to process everything within a two or three weeks span and just wear yourself yeah. out. 
That's true. I mean, if you want to also, when you plant, you might want to move with the idea of staggering the the, uh, the end result. Because mm -hmm. if everything comes to fruition all at once, and you you know you eat fresh off the vine, mm -hmm. you know you can only eat so much stuff before you're like, screw this, man. I'm I'm getting a burger at McDonald's. Right. And if you're trying to can too, it's just oh, too much to try to do all at one time. Yeah. If you're putting anything away. Right. So yeah, and, and I'm like a camel, you know. I just feed the hump until it just <laughs> you never know when your next meal is coming. So I'm eating it all now. That, that's right. The the fattest of us are going to be the ones that survive the apocalypse. That's right. We'll be we'll be laughing and laughing. It depends on if they turn to cannibalism fast or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's true too. We're screwed. <laughs> so <laughs> like a buffalo. <laughs> <Get that rubber. laughs> All right, so we talk about canning. Uh, what are some other options? Freezing, um, having a root cellar, because you can. I I don't know. Can maybe you guys know more than I do? But the concept of a root cellar. You know, every house used to have a root cellar. Mm -hmm. um, That's where we keep the retarded people now. <laughs> are we allowed to say that word? Can we take it? I'm just taking it back. Okay. No, uh, it's the attic. We keep them in the attic. Aaron's yeah. opinions are not that of Gun Guy Radio. Uh, <laughs> or Gun <Guy> Guy's podcast. <laughs> Don't blame me. I didn't make them that way. So root cellar is, I, I, I guess, you know, you, it needs to be a place that's dry and, and dark right. um, mm -hmm. and fairly cool. Oh, um, yeah. Nowadays, we have, those of us that have basements have modern basements that may be finished, so they may be just as warm as the upstairs. They may be well lit, so you know having a root cellar is something you may have to you know make some changes to an area of your basement to have that kind of environment. But you know a root cellar would allow you to store uh, squash and like potatoes, uh, you know sweet potatoes, you know different different well, kinds of things like that. Yeah. Apples, you know things. Yeah, every things every that, house has a root cellar in it. Every house has a root cellar in it. It's just that it's not called a root cellar. It's underneath your sink. And I'm not. Yeah, I know it sounds silly, but if you look underneath your sink, you can put your potatoes under there. You, is, I know people keep their trash cans and their cleaning solvents under. There. But for the most part, they hold almost the same conditions as a, a an old root cellar. Because it's dark, it's dank, it's. I mean, it's not. It's not always completely dry, but it's not horribly moist down there. It's it, the conditions are actually. Uh, really close to a root cellar. Just throwing it out there. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what, what mean, other I, methods of storage? Dehydrating? Have you guys... I, I've never had a dehydration um, you know, unit or whatever. Have you guys experimented with that? I, I had dehydrated ice cream once at net, like at the Smithsonian. That is was that, good. Is that astronaut and, ice cream? Yeah, it's good stuff. I don't think I can make it at home though. I got an ice cream maker though. So I've but. seen I've seen these dehydration uh, kits. I guess you call them where they have racks where you you know you chop up whatever it is. It can be almost anything. And you slice it up and then you lay them on these racks and uh, and then you know you. I guess it does it have like a motor that pulls the. Usually have like a fan and moisture. It's like a dehumidifier whatever. basically. You is know? that what it is? Basically, I mean, when I was a kid, I remember our, our, in school we we cut up apples and hung them on a string, and they all dried out. And you know, it was like dehydrated apples. Mm. It, they tasted pretty good. You know, I like food, I like apples, so I like them. But uh, yeah, I mean, I like jerky though. So if if I think and that's one thing, that's one thing, if I were to hunt, I'm not a hunter. I, the only thing I shoot at is targets. But if uh, if I ever shot a deer, that whole thing. You know, tenderloin and all would just be made into a big piece of jerky. It actually, I would, I would just take, I would debone it and leave the shape, and just make it into a big thing of jerky that I could just put in the corner of the room and just gnaw on it. So I love jerky. That stuff's good. <laughs> I, I, think, I don't think it works with a whole deer. I think you. Need I, to. I bet you could do it. I mean, not the eyes or anything. That'd be nasty. I think the but the maggots would take it before it dried out. Get a little Maybe furry. I'll keep it in the room. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it wouldn't last that long. I'd, I'd ride it around. I'd carry it with me. I mean, you know, it's all right. it would gather no moss. I'll tell you that. 
You, you can buy a lot of different types of dehydration uh, racks and things like that, and you can you just use your own oven, put it at the lowest setting, and leave the door cracked open. And uh, some of the hotter, my mother-in-law just bought a, a new oven, and it has a dehydration setting in it, so you can put the other accessory really? racks in there and dehydrate in this new oven of hers. Yeah, you can use your dryer. I wouldn't use my dryer, but I'd use your dryer. <laughs> no, you really can't use a dryer. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Been around for six days. <laughs> bite the deer. Yeah, the seasoning's really the hard part to get in there, you know. But it, you just keep throwing it in there; it spins around. You're all set. <laughs> <And> it, <laughs> oh man, I think we just made something. You know, if George Foreman's listening right now, he's like, "Really? This is great. Look <laughs> at this going. Dehydrate a full deer." <laughs> yeah. uh... <laughs> no, but I, I, you know, um, I think you know the classic way of smoking uh, uh, your old foods, uh, curing it, uh, brining. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can go about uh, preserving vegetables and food. I, I tried to make pickles once, and I tell you what, they were so terrible. Um, I, I used to, you know, because I, you can buy like packs, like little season packs, you put in there into your into your cucumber moisture mix, water mix, and vinegar and all that stuff. But we're like, no, I'm just going to look at a recipe on the internet and just see what I have in my my, my uh, spice rack. And they, they, they taste so terrible. So li live and learn. But I like pickles, too. Pickles and, and, and a giant deer. That's what I'm going to get. You can, and we're talking about vegetable gardens, but with meat, you can salt cure meat and you can sugar sugar cure meat but, you know, before refrigeration. You can pack them down in, in sugar or you pack them down in salt and they'll last a lot longer. Not years, but they'll last, you know, several months, get you through the winter months. That salt peter works too. <laughs> so, um, do we want to touch on, uh, I guess we already touched on what, goats, chickens? Um, so, if you want to get into the. Uh, I see on your list. Uh, the poultry. Yeah, one of the things you don't want to have, I see on your list, is rabbits. And not because rabbits are, are small and bony. Um, it's the fact that rabbits actually have no nutritional value whatsoever. They're, they're, um, they're, they're, they're so hyper. You know, they're, uh, I don't even know the word I'm looking for. They're... They don't have to be fat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, their metabolism is so fast yeah. that they actually you could eat rabbits every day for every meal and actually starve to death. So uh, that's your wild rabbits. Domesticated rabbits, once you're feeding, they get pretty fatty. Uh, okay, fair enough. That's that's a good point. Uh, yeah, yeah just, I, I'm just used to. Yeah, you know, it, but wild rabbits, you're right. If you if you eat rabbit, you'll just die because you won't, you won't get enough nutrition out of them to process the. Uh, the intake. Yeah. So you just keep getting weaker and weaker. So la last year I raised some uh, chickens and ducks. Did you? And, and um, how I many only, ducks did you raise? Um, five. What, what did you name them? Uh, Donald. Uh, no. You didn't. Really, you didn't name them. No, no that's terrible. I don't. Did you them. eat them? Yes. Yes. And but you didn't name them. And uh, no, am I supposed to? Yeah, you got. If you're gonna eat them, you gotta name them. It's gonna be like, man, that was Richard the tastes around. great. You know, it's, you don't want to be like, oh, which one's this one? This is, you'd be like, this is duck number four. Yeah. You know, that doesn't work. Thanksgiving, you gotta, you gotta, Christmas. This, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, when you say you butchered them, did you take them to a butcher shop and they butchered it for you, or did, or did you actually physically cut its head off and, and gut it and defeather yeah, so and all that I, stuff? I, I, I cut their well. Yeah, I did. I did all myself. I, I tried a couple different methods to off them, and um, I found that <laughs> left some pills next to <laughs> suicide. Hopefully, <laughs> right? Yeah. No. Now we 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 can do this the easy way or the hard way. <laughs> so how'd you yeah. end up? Uh, how'd you end up doing it? Why well, like the? I like the you know the log stump and the axe method the most. So. Oh, okay. But I tried, I tried, you know, slitting their, uh, you know, hanging them upside down and slitting their neck and letting them bleed out. I, I tried that, but that I, I'm too impatient. That took too long. So, you know, to the log and, yep. 
That's good. We can get, yeah, 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 I guess. But I'll tell you what, I, I raised the white Pekin ducks, you know, the big ducks, and they, they're just such a pain to uh, pluck. Yeah. You know, well, did you uh, boil them first? Yeah. So, so you know, chickens and ducks, you, you basically you cut the heads off, you dunk them in boiling water, and it will kind of make the feathers release. Uh, and chickens, you know, the feathers pull out like nothing if you do that. But these ducks, I mean, they have all these down feathers and everything, and it just takes forever to get all the feathers off the ducks. So I, I probably won't do ducks again, but the chickens are fairly easy. You know, you, you know, pull all the feathers off and then you, uh, you know, basically, you know, gut them and uh, then cut them up or, or you can freeze them whole as well. But You can can them too. Yeah, I can't get them to fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bigger jar. So, did, did the uh, ducks lay eggs? They they were just starting to when I butchered them. But, See, I uh, mean that that's a good reason to keep them around right there. Right, and and we go through a lot of eggs. So this year, if I get them again, it'll probably be for eggs. It, uh, it probably because geese it, it, a goose it, has a huge obviously a big goose right. egg, but goose have well, really. And I like the ducks better because they're a lot smarter than the chickens. The chickens are just so stupid. They're just dumber yes, than. They, any they're animal. basically plants. So they, if you're a vegetarian and you listen to the show, they're plant. No, you can eat them at school. Would, I know exactly. Why would you not <laughs> eat them? Um, but the ducks are really smart. I could tell them to go inside at night, and they would get, listen to me and go in. But the chickens are just dumber. And then you cut their life. heads off. It, yeah. Just, just, Trouble here with chickens around here is between the hawks and the raccoons and the possums. Well, we the, lost. We lost oh, over God. half of ours. Or about half of ours, we lost to uh, owls, the great horned owls. Yeah. Oh, that sounds really cool to watch, though. Well, it happened uh, at dusk <laughs> or dark, so we <laughs> really couldn't see it happen. But get a trail cam out there. Come on. Uh, <laughs> not a bad idea. Maybe I'll sacrifice some this year. <laughs> <laughs> to the great owl on the top of a post, <laughs> put a trail cam. <laughs> <laughs> I like Peter would get you with that one. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, chickens are dirty and nasty. They and they, you know what? Um, oh, anyways, they really do look reptilian too. They're, anyways, they're all scaly legs and stuff. I forgot my whole point to that was that I only fed them feed in in the early spring when you know there wasn't much outside for them to eat. But once you know the grass greened up and everything, then I didn't feed them a thing. I just gave them water and they ate off the land the whole year. And they, you know, they grew. The ducks grew plenty big. The chickens grew. You know, to a, a pretty good size. So you know that goes to show that you know you can raise chickens just you know grass fed, I guess. You yeah, know. you're like an Amish man now. <laughs> you make me some wicker furniture. I need to work on my beard. <laughs> and hat. They got some cool hats. And my suspenders. Anyways, so. Let's uh, take a little break here, and then we'll talk about some resources that uh, we have in the show notes. So this week's episode is brought to you by L.A. Police Gear, lapolicegear.com. And this week uh, I want to tell you about something uh, pretty cool that L.A. Police Gear did. Uh, so I was off for a few weeks because we had our fourth uh, child, a son, and uh, L.A. Police Gear just out of the blue sent uh, a, a baby gift, I guess. They sent the... Uh, Tac Teddy, the L.A. Police Gear Tactical Teddy Bear. That's right. You see him? <laughs> yeah, so I the, see him. Am I allowed to comment on him? Well, I got one fang. <laughs> What's up with that? Yeah, he's, yeah I know. Got, he's got a fang. He's got a, like a scar on his, on eye, his eye. And then he's got the um, classic I Love Mom tattoo. He's wearing the colors of the Crips? or Yeah, Crips. <laughs> so he must be in the gang. He's, he's got, got a the, donut really, dude. Look at that. Yeah, he's got he's put on some weight. Yeah, yeah, but uh, he's also you ever has, eat a bear? he also has a place on the back for a mole patch or or some kind of patch. You can put put your kid's name on his back or or I was thinking maybe if you get all tacked up in your own chest rig, you could like stick him to your chest rig and look cool. You know what though? I don't know. All jokes aside, that that's actually really cool that they did that. Isn't that cool? No, I, did, yeah. I had no idea they even carried this, but this would be a great uh, gift if you know someone having a baby. How embarrassed are they uh, with the fact that they find out that it's not your kid? <laughs> not my oh. kid. What? Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> yeah, Aaron's not allowed on the network anymore. It, this one does look a little <laughs> different. <laughs> um, but yeah, check out the LE Police Gear Tac Teddy, and uh, it's pretty cool. And so you can also, uh, if you order eighty nine dollars or more at LA Police Gear, you get free shipping, and they also have the three hundred and sixty five day return policy. So pretty cool. Um, and you know they you always have great. In that. Say that again. You can still carry in the bear there? Has he got a slot to put a gun in? Uh, I don't know. Maybe we can get a <laughs> little, that get movie, little holster. You know, that movie that had the pig. Had the gun and the pig. Uh, the Muppets. Oh, oh wait, the gun wait, and wait, the pig. Here we go. Here we go. He's Red. Got, he's got the movie Red. He's got a little gun here. Here we go. Oh, cool. He's got his own gun. No, this. The, yeah. I got this at Shop Show. It's a it's a USB drive, but that's about the right size. Uh-huh. Huh? Yeah. Here. He's like, where's Harry's armory? <laughs> I don't. Yeah, he needs like a belt to uh, stick his gun in. I don't. I don't know. All right. So. <laughs> anyways, Tech yeah. Teddy, check him out. L.A. Police. Yeah, only eighty nine dollars free shipping. That's pretty cool. And the Tech Teddy is only nine ninety nine. You can't beat that. Yeah, and if you buy ten of them, free shipping. That's right. Stock up. No, get them while they're hot. You yeah. gotta, you gotta get enough to cover your whole chest rig with them. No one's gonna mess with a guy covered in teddy bears. I know, right? You know, you could, you could have, a, you could have any gun he wants in his hand. It'd be like, I, I, no one's gonna take him seriously covered in teddy bears. Perfect. It's almost like camouflage. Exactly. Urban camouflage. A, a camouflage of cuteness. That's right. Everyone, he's gonna run at you with a gun. Everyone's gonna be like, aww. All right, and uh, Duluth uh, Trading Company makes uh, this episode possible as well. So if you have uh, maybe a plumber's butt issue, you can uh, check out L.A. Police Gear and get that long tail T to cover that up. And you mean uh, uh, Duluth? Oh, what what did I say? L.A. Police. I'm still I'm I'm mixing up my ads. <laughs> I'm here to help you. Looks like the bear could use a long tail tee from what I saw. Yeah, you know, maybe uh, we can get him a little long tail tee. He's kind of indecent there a little bit. Um, but uh, back to Duluth Trading Company, DuluthTrading.com. You can uh, also check out their buck naked underwear. You know, maybe if you need some more uh, freedom of movement. Uh, you yeah, know, I'm looking at that stuff. It actually looks very. Yeah. They also have the. Um, Man, the buck naked man can boxer briefs. They they come in a can. The man can. Because a man can can. <laughs> That's right. Did man I can 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 can. <laughs> oh, Prince Albert came in one, I guess. That's right. No pinch, no stink, and no sweat. Buck naked underwear. So check it out. DuluthTrading.com, and go to uh, GunGuyRadio.com/slash Duluth to take you there. There's some nice looking socks. I like socks. So we have uh, some recommendations here. Troy's book recommendations uh, section of the show. So Troy, why don't you tell us what you have here? Oh yeah, when I got into uh, prepping, there was several books that I found really helpful, and so I just put those in the in the show notes here. Uh, first one would be the Encyclopedia of Country Living. Uh, it's sort of like um, if you ever saw the Foxfire series books, it's like all those shoved into one and organized in a fashion you can actually use. So it's uh, it's real helpful. It uh, covers lots of different uh, subjects, lots of different uh, things you would need to know about as far as planting, cooking, raising livestock, canning. It covers it all. And it's not that much to cover all those different topics. Uh, and I put a link in there you can find it on Amazon. Uh, blue ball. Go ahead. For a penny. I didn't find it for a penny, but no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you might, you might search around eBay and find it cheaper. I don't know, where, but uh, wherever you want, wherever you buy books at. Uh, blue ball uh, book uh, guide to preserving. I think that thing's like a hundred years old or something, and it's. Uh, but you can find those everywhere. But uh, I put a link in there for that. That just shows you how to do the canning, different recipes and. Um, 
then uh, putting food uh, by can't uh, see putting food by is the name of the book. And right now I found it, or today I found it on Amazon for a penny. Ah, see, there it is. There it is. And uh, if you live in a small, you know, you don't have a lot of area to grow, uh, raised bed, small gardening. Uh, we talked about earlier that all new square foot gardening. This is like a new edition of the original book, The Square Foot Gardening. It talks about uh, raised beds or, you know, small area gardening. And it's a, it's a really good resource. And you can find the original book. I bought it for a penny on uh, Amazon, as I had said uh, earlier. And then I just put some blogs, blog links in here. If, um, uh, if you've ever heard of Survival Blog or James Wesley Rawls, uh, there's all kinds of free resources on there. You can go in there and search and find all kinds of articles about canning, gardening, and all kinds of prepping things. And then I just put some other links in there. I don't know if you want me to go through all of these or not, Jake. But Sorry, I was muted. Yeah, just uh, real quick, just... Hit on them. The survivallog.com, uh, it's, if you're new to prepping, there's all kinds of things you can find in there. Uh, or if you go, I think it's survivallog.com forward slash newbies or newbie, uh, it'll tell you what you need to start out with um, as far as that. The prepper uh, project uh, tells you how to raise a garden. It's just a good um, blog about raising garden, what size you'll need for your family. Uh, and then I've, I've been in looking into aquaponics. We didn't really talk about that during the main portion of the show, but where you have the um, fish uh, provide your nutrients for your plants, and your plants, you know, provide for the for the fish and serve its own little ecosystem, circulating the water, you know, through the plants and filtering back down into the to the fish. And so it's a it's a nice little ecosystem. You can build those as small or as large as you want to. But they produce a lot more uh, produce, and plus you have fish for your food. So if you've got a little bit more space, uh, you can set that up. I've seen, uh, you know, you can... What kind of fish would you add? Tilapia is a, one of the main ones, uh, but there's, uh, I mean, there's other fish. Depends on where you live at. Uh, some fish are more cold water. Tilapia around here, because it's we have a pretty, usually have a pretty warm winter. So cold fish are tasty. Yeah. But you can use goldfish, I mean, just to, you know, provide the nutrients for the plants. It's like well, and that also helps you eat the eat insects, like mosquitoes and stuff, because if you have water and it's, it, it stand, if it's standing water, right. you know, um, mosquitoes will just populate your entire backyard. So, like, fish will eat those, the, the eggs and, and such, which is good, you know. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm told my wife, I think that'll be one of our next projects. We've, we're, Plan on doing bees this summer, and if I'm able to, I'm going to dig a pond to stock for fish. Um, those are two main projects this year, and probably we'll do chicken. Oh, with you. Yeah, come you to like Kentucky. Like my, yeah, Kentucky. You know, I I used to I used to work in Nashville, so I used to drive through Kentucky all the time, and yeah. it's beautiful, man. It's mountainy. It's uh, it's it's blue. It's green. It's horsey. It's gardeny. Yeah. It's farmy. Shwarmy. Small. No shawarma, though. No chicken shawarma. <laughs> Disappointment there. Well, what are we going to cool. do? And uh, the Garden Guns podcast has a few episodes on prepping, episodes 16, 39, and 57, which are all linked up in the show notes here. And, uh, we, you know, I've been uh, doing a YouTube channel of the week most weeks, and I'm not doing a specific channel this week, but YouTube is such a great resource for this topic. Mm -hmm. Just type in backyard garden, and you have... 400,000 results, you know. Uh, anything you can think of, just search for it. Um, you know, backyard chickens, how to butcher a chicken. That, that's how I figured out how to butcher a chicken, YouTube. Um, <laughs> how to choke them, you know. But, you know, before you go any further, I just want to point out, if you're going to do a garden, the best thing you can do is buy some graph paper and plan it out. Don't just walk through the store and be like, oh, that looks good, that looks good, that looks good. Do a little research. Find out what grows well together. Draw a map of what you want it. To, what you want it to look like, and make make plan it out. It just it just helps a little bit better than than um than just kind of a just throwing buckshot of a seed ground. Yeah. 
make sure you mark what you planted where you planted it so you'll know what's <laughs> growing. <laughs> growing. Yeah, that's helpful too. You know, uh, right. and, is this is this a weed? Is this a plant? What is this? It's weed. That's a plant. <laughs> No, no, not that kind of weed. <laughs> We're in Colorado now. Come on, man. <laughs> it's All right. There. Well, we're to the Brown Owls giveaway where we uh, talk about uh, what we're giving away for the month of March, and we're giving away Nebraska Star Beef Jerky. That's right. The yeah. Lucky Man Outdoorsman Beef Jerky. So, you know, this goes right along with what we're talking about. If you need a little a stash to get you through, uh, you know, just look no farther than Nebraska Star Beef Jerky. And we're giving away uh, a few of these multi-flavor 12-packs, and they come in their own ammo can as well, so pretty cool. Yes. Yeah, it's really cool, and if you order enough of them, you can actually physically build an entire deer from them. <laughs> and you can just sit so you can and eat the deer. engineer your deer idea, right? <laughs> that's right, that's right, because obviously no one's taking it forward the other way. <laughs> Anyways, to get entered for the Brown Owls giveaway, you uh, simply subscribe to the Gun Guy Radio newsletter by going to gunguyradio.com slash winner, or the right-hand column of gunguyradio.com is an easy form you fill out. And uh, last month we gave away the Series 3 AR multitasker tool to two people, and we're still waiting to hear from Brady Brown. He must not use the email that he signed up with, so... Brady Brown, if you uh, you know you got about another week, and then I'm going to draw another name. So I say draw uh, it now. Brady, yeah. you missed the boat, yeah, yeah. man. Come on now. I know. Come on. I know. Come on. All right. Well, uh, let's uh, say goodbye. So, Aaron, uh, we like shooting. We like shooting podcast. Uh, what do you guys have going on? Right now, this is a uh, this is really great. Um, we do a lot of reviews on our site. We do um, our show on the Firearms Radio Network, which, you know, honestly, we, we really appreciate uh, the efforts you, you, Jake, put in and your team on, uh, on helping us out. But what we are doing right now is a pledge drive. If you go to we like shooting backslash or forward slash pledge uh, or we like shooting.com forward slash pledge, it'll take you to a site where you can pledge to help support our show give us better equipment, um, allow us to purchase stuff. And we it's all tiered, so if you pledge a ton of money, you can actually end up getting some of the gear that we test back. Or you, you get you get it for yourself. Um, what level and, do I pledge for the beef jerky deer? You know what? I'll tell you what. If we if we get $200 an episode worth in pledges, I will um, I will make one personally and send it to you. All right, and actually, if we get two hundred fifty dollars, if we get two hundred fifty dollars in uh, pledges per episode, uh, my co-host uh, Nick Lynch will get my face tattooed on his posterior. <laughs> so that's that's a goal right there. I mean, and, and, and listen, if you want to pledge, if you want to be part of this, it's, it's, you can as little as a nickel and as much as you want, or as little as a penny, to be honest with you. You, you know. Um, we actually had a person. I had a person email me and just say, "Can I just send you a, a check?" And yeah, you can. So um, it's 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 a great thing. And even if you just if you don't want us to give us, we made a great uh, video, a commercial. So if you just go to the website, you can watch the commercial and laugh and and enjoy it. Very cool. So uh, Troy, Gun and Guns podcast. What do you got going on? Well, if uh, our weekly show for those that haven't listened, we. Doug McDowell and myself, we do uh, a little bit of a comedy section. We do a um, Bible verse and break that out. Um, what was this week's? Pardon? What was this week's Bible verse? Last week's Bible verse? I don't know. Okay, I guess it would be. Oh, we <laughs> no, I put you on the spot. What's, what's the Tenth Commandment? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, but uh, <laughs> the weekly Bible verse, we, we break that out on the, on the show and discuss uh, you know what what that means um, and then we uh, will talk about what we've done in guns we have a main topic section like this last week's show was a prepping show it was uh, it was the end of the world part two <laughs> because we uh, Jake excuse me Mike and Zach had done the original uh, end of the world uh, prepper show 
and so Doug and I did our own and uh, went over some of the topics like we talked about this week and um, then we have a weekly giveaway uh, we've been giving away uh, gun gun podcast t-shirts and uh, this week's show you just have to come check it out I will be recording that uh, later this evening so it'll be cool whatever it is awesome that's very cool yeah <laughs> So, uh, you know, I'd like to mention uh, Ryan Cross, uh, Hunter Design. If you're looking for any artwork, website design, uh, Ryan Cross, he does all the artwork for the Firearms Radio Network, very good stuff. Uh, he did the uh, God and Guns podcast artwork, which is pretty yeah. awesome. You know, and I'm a graphic designer. I, I have 12 years' experience. I've been doing it forever. We we here at We Like Shooting actually hired him to our to our logo, so, you know, that's how good he is. You know, I've been doing it for 12 years, but I like his work so much, we actually are paying him to do ours. So check him out for sure. It's, it's It does great work. Awesome. So hunterdesign.com, and that about wraps up the show for this week. You can uh, you know, share feedback by leaving a comment below this video or at the bottom of the show notes for episode 112 of Gun Guy Radio. Remember to subscribe to us in iTunes and leave us that iTunes review and join uh, organizations like the NRA and the Second Amendment Foundation. And also don't forget to shop our affiliate links with Brownells, uh, gunguyradio.com slash satisfaction, or with Amazon. Amazon.com uh, will, um, you know, I'm sure you all shop there already, so you can uh, give back a little bit to the network by going to firearmsradio.tv slash Amazon before your next uh, shopping spree. And uh, also check out the other shows on the Firearms Radio Network, like God and Guns Podcast or We Like Shooting Podcast, and Handgun Radio, Handgun Radio hosted by Ryan Machad. Now, really good uh, information on all things pertaining to handguns. His last episode was especially good where um, he had a special guest on, uh, Ian McCollum, and he talked about uh, forgotten weapons, and he talked about some really unusual, some really fascinating handguns. So check him out, handgunradio.com. Well, that wraps up this episode. Thank you, Troy. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. And we'll see you next week.